And we are live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Holy Crap, the Vlogcast. Vlogcast comes from a skeptical point of view to answer some of the questions of why. This Vlogcast started as a combination of spite and the Streisand effect because we needed somewhere to vent, and Lord knows this is going to be that night. Before I introduce everybody, let me go ahead and remind you this is a Power of Ten episode, which means there are no filters. This is an age. <sighs> protected episode on YouTube, and if you should not be listening to this for any reason, because mixed company, whatever, now is a good time to go ahead, just fast forward to another show, or just put it on hold until it's safe for you. Just remember, you've been fucking warned. Introducing you from the middle, from the middle of the U.S., Bridget Fitch, good evening. Good evening. There you are. And over the water to Paris, France. Joseph, good morning. Joseph, now I good morning. It's the time to be muted. Yay. You're <laughs> Joseph, you are muted. Ah, oh, he fell off. He's well, gone. Fine. That that well, he's on his phone. We'll see how this plays out. I think we scared him away. No, nah, oh, he's come back. Joseph, there you are. Good morning. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry. I had a uh, 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 button coffee mishap. Fair enough. <laughs> and of course, I'm your main host. I'm known as Shujin Tribble. You can find me pretty much everywhere under that name. S-H-U-J-I-N. So, hi. Yeah. Um, you remember I took, uh, uh, I took the month of May off and... and you know, as soon as I took time off, everything just went to shit. Well, you know, uh, come back in time and, and look at that. It's just a couple weeks later and all of a sudden we got a Power 10 episode and lordy lord, don't we have something that's completely superseded or feels like the entirety of May. We got a lot. I'm just going to tell you right now, we got a lot. But in any case, as always, if you'd like to join us for the recording sessions, we are recording live on YouTube. So you can join us and be part of the live chat. Stephanie, good morning. Good to see you. Uh, Phyllis is going to be otherwise occupied because, uh, well, reasons. Plus, uh, best of, of what I remember, it is field day weekend, I think. I could be wrong. So the folks in the ham radio communities are, of course, you know, a buzz with trying to make contacts all over the world, which honestly and truly, I miss doing it as much as I kind of almost got into trouble one time. But you know, it's 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 all good. And as far as to getting into trouble, are you guys ready for this? I am drinking tonight orange juice, just regular, good old fashioned straight orange juice. You want to know why? That wasn't I. That wasn't hypothetical. Do Do you want to know why? Because you're not drinking beer. Right. Because there's this. Oh, Guinness Zero. Yes, I bought why? a four pack. I bought a four pack. Zero alcohol. Well. Yep. It's 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 what it says on on the okay now I asked this last night of uh, of the guys if the if the information is printed directly on the metal does it still qualify as a label? Well, it's labeling. Yeah, all right, yeah, that's fair enough. But it says on the bottle the 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 canister non-alcoholic draft. Now, I'm, I'm assuming it's draft because it's D-R-A-U-G-H-T, which yep, normally, yeah, because G-H, as we know for well, is, you know, pronounced F as in ghost. English, you need to, okay. Contains less than 0.5% alcohol by volume. Malt beverage with natural flavors. I tried it this past week. Malt beverage with natural flavors. 
is a lie. It is poorly flavored carbonated mineral water. It's got the right look for the most part. Once you pour it out, it's nice and dark. It's it's very, very, very dark, but mm -hmm. it's as thin as paper. So, um, well, it's fucking close to water. Yep. That's exactly the joke that I used last night on the Friday night show. And it's not an exaggeration. So uh, we've basically decided that uh, nobody in the Guinness company itself had anything to do with the production of this. It was some yuppie yokel who decided, hey, we can sell more of this stuff because... You know, people who don't want to drink alcohol but want to have the taste can can just buy this stuff. <laughs> no. Does Cause... it look like tap water from Flint? That's the question. It, it it looks almost identical. Well, I don't I don't have one to compare it to. It looks very similar to actual proper Guinness. You know, the the, the liquid bread. But um Nope. Nope. I'm actually thinking that maybe uh, in order to properly get rid of it, what I'll do is I'll, I'll open the cans that I have left and I'll just, you know, pour them into my tomato plants because they need water. So they might as well just have water. It's <laughs> fucking it just. Or you could just drink a regular beer and pee in your plants. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I have to see what happens with that. Anyway, so we'll see where that takes us. I will have the uh, I will have the horrible scopes for everybody momentarily. Which, because I did not get them done last Friday, everybody gets a nicer one this week. Which I'm going to tell you right now was really really difficult for me to do because. I had to keep reminding myself they have to be nicer this week. That's not my natural state. So I hope you all appreciate how much I worked at this this time. We'll see what happens. Anyway, let me at least get everything going because we've got too much to do. So with five minutes on the clock, your five minute freestyle starts right now. Ignition. Now, for those of you that are at all familiar with me, you know full well that I have, I have been a, a fan of NASA and the space exploration that has been done by humanity for as long as I can remember. I was born just a couple months before we had a man land on the moon. So technically, my life actually predates us having stepped foot on another celestial body which is kind of freaky for me to think about. It's even worse yet because since my single-digit childhood, we have not had any more people on the moon. I digress. But when you're firing a rocket, you know for well that there is the countdown. T minus 10, 9, is, you know, everybody's getting all hyped for it. You get down to T minus 1. Ignition, liftoff. Ignition happens before liftoff. Now, you, you think about it, and this is, well, yeah, of course, because otherwise, you know, you can't lift off if you don't have the rockets running, because, I mean, you kind of need the rockets running. Y yeah, no. The ignition happens about a second, maybe two, before liftoff actually occurs. And with the news this week, that's what's happened. I honestly and truly feel like that's what's happened. The fires have been lit. There is so much because of this that is just spewing forth. There are people massing. There are people fomenting. There are groups that are telling other groups what's going on. 
And it's not just the Supreme Court here in the U.S. that's happening it with, believe it or not. It's a whole bunch of other stuff. The January 6th committee, especially, is one of those big pieces. It is harder and harder and harder for dyed-in-the-wool Republicans, or should I say the GQP, to ignore what's going on. Because the people who are testifying, a lot of the people who are testifying, a lot of the people testifying are Republicans themselves. And it wouldn't be so bad if it was that they were fielding questions that were intended to make them feel bad and wah, wah all day long from mean-spirited Democrats. Oh, no. The questions that are being posed to these Republicans who are testifying are being written by Republicans asked by Republicans of Republicans and they are the ones who are saying yeah you know what um this is what happened this is what happened and this is what happened and what's one of the biggest one that stands out for me Matt Gates who was requesting a presidential pardon a preemptive presidential pardon. As an aside, if you are requesting a pardon, it's because you think that you have done something illegal, not necessarily immoral, so that you don't have to go into prison. Asking for a pardon, if memory serves, the quote was, from the beginning of time. This son of a bitch, this slimy motherfucker, knows for well he's done something wrong. Or, or, he was trying to get the most presumptuous presidential pardon that would be remarked into history in either case. This individual, I refuse to call him a man, this individual deserves to have every level of scrutiny lit under his ass to find out why the fuck he would want to be spared prison time from the beginning of time. You want to see what happens when they say, light this Roman candle under my ass? That's what I want. Because I will love to see when that finally happens. Episode 4, 10. Did we not fucking warn you? I'm sorry, I'm taking creative liberties with the, uh, with the title for tonight. Did we not fucking warn you? We warned you in 2016. We warned you what would fucking happen. And we were told that we were hysterical. We were told that we were overemphasizing the possibility. We were told that we were just being hyperbolic. That we were snowflakes. That we were just triggered. Did we not fucking warn you? So, we got a lot to talk about. And we, Bridget and I spoke a little bit before the show. We have agreed, as best we can, that we are not going to, pardon me, that we are going to try not to yell. We're going to try not to yell. It's going to be tough, but we're going to try. On my side... I have people in the house I don't want to wake up, so I am going to do my best not to yell. I took a Xanax yesterday. I'm still grogged out from it, so I'm going to try not to yell as well. 
And I did it for all of our protection. Yeah. And we know for well, you know, it's it's super early in the morning. Joseph hasn't had coffee time to to get him really kick started. And it's oh dark stupid in the morning. So I don't think that he would yell and scream anyway, because it's not his way. No. It's not your way. And I'm gonna tell people benzos are bad news. You don't take Xanax unless you absolutely have to. Mm. But eh, it was called for in this case. That's what they're for is emergencies. Somehow I think this qualifies. Yeah. On the bright side, let's go ahead and take care of the horrible scopes and then um, we can a after we've, you know, tried for a little bit of levity, then then we can go ahead and we can um lambast it everything because Lord knows it's um it's gonna happen. So, the horrible scopes this week, like I said, uh, since I needed to kind of do penance this week, everybody gets a nicer one than normal. If you know what your astrological sign is, cool. It doesn't really matter. I mean, just pick one. It's it's not going to matter at all. So don't worry about it. Aries, your tech support issues are few and far between, but they'll all be solved easily this week. Just follow the traditional turn it off then turn it back on again and you'll be golden if you think your house is haunted just find the circuit breaker and turn the whole house off then on again and that just might do it for you simple although we kind of ran into a small problem last night because it was like well what what if you're you know if if the circuit breaker doesn't come back on again can you can you use a penny in there and then i suddenly realized there's two small problems with that uh, that would mean that you have a fuse block, which really needs to be completely redone to have a circuit breaker box. And two, there are fewer and fewer countries that have pennies anymore, so... Good point. Mm. Taurus, they say never meet your heroes, but you'll be able to without negative repercussions. Since your hero is... Italian assorted with oil, tomato, and green peppers, things are going to work out just right. And never trust meatball parmigiana people wearing white dress shirts. Gemini. With the steam, with the steam summer sale going on, now's your chance to buy all those games you've been waiting for. Elder Scrolls Online and Poly Bridge are $5 U.S. Batman Arkham Collection, $9 US, and Farming Simulator 22 is discounted at 45 USD. You might want to avoid that last one since the Logitech G Heavy Equipment Bundle controller set will set you back another 300 Yeah. Ouch, that's steep. Yeah, Farming Simulator 22, that's actually discounted 10% to $45. And... You know, looking up, I knew that th I knew that that controller set existed. I didn't know how much it was, and then I had to think to myself, "What else are you going to use that controller set with?" So, why yeah. even bother? I mean, just get a, a a flight stick yoke, whatever, and just work from there. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online, if you can get that for five bucks, it's worth it. I will give it consideration. Considering I bought the the My Little Pony game at forty bucks and it was just not worth the forty dollars. Yeah, just just go check you know, go check out some you know YouTube videos of it. It's definitely worth five bucks. Think about I mean, that I paid one hundred and twenty for you know like the collector's edition and got my money's worth out of it and then some. Keep that in mind, Cancer Moonchild. They say imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. But do you really want a whole bunch of people imitating you out there? Stop being so popular and inspiring to everyone this week. Okay, you can't just turn it off, but could you at least tone it down a little? Maybe make the rest of us look better? Thanks? Leo, rain will be falling for you this week, but it's for a good cause. Put on your swimsuit. Pull out your car washing equipment and make that beastie look its best. Timing is everything. So get out of your wet clothing and take it for a short drive just as the rain ends to blow dry the droplets off. And no speeding this time. 
Virgo. Dungeons and Dragons has what meant has what many consider the mother of all dragons, Tiam, Tiamat? Tiamat. Tiamat. She's more a hydra than a dragon, but whatever. Now imagine a dragon that chooses to hide instead of fight by camouflaging itself like a comedian. So it's possible there's been one of us, one of those watching over you your whole life, protecting you like you're its pet. That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Have a dragon watching over you the entire time. I mean, so long as they don't get hung. Whatever. Libra, with the summer comes all the fairs and festivals, so it's time to do something you haven't done in a long time. Carry cash for a change. If you're a vendor, give serious consideration to making all your products cost a direct dollar amount instead of something ending in, like, 38 cents. And if you're a buyer, just consider giving the change back as a small tip. Scorpio. In the 1980s, there were a bunch of Saturday morning cartoons based on video games that stunk. Pac-Man, Qbert, Frogger, and the Super Mario Super Show was dicey. But the Cuphead series on Netflix is actually pretty great. Actual dedication and work went into it, and they got the 1930s tune physics just right. So spend some time with friends who have a Netflix account, if you don't already. Have you seen it? I have not. It's, it's I think really, my husband has seen some of it. It, is, it really is good. It took them six months of pre-production to make sure that they actually got the look and feel correct. They did a bang-up job. Uh, Hubby was scoping that out a couple of nights ago when I walked through the living room, and yeah. Hmm. I'll look into that. Yes. Sagittarius. There are a lot of musical covers that are better than others. We might disagree on some, but it's hard to hear the song My Way and not imagine Frank Sinatra's voice instead of, say, Sid Vicious. That's actually the contrary for me. Pull out your crudy music collection and enjoy chilling out while sitting in the fan's path. I can't listen to Sid Vicious's version. I just can't. Why? I understand the idea of punk. But that's that's not punk to me. That's troll. And I can't I can't jive to that. Troll is part of punk. Punk's an attitude, not a style. It is, but Imagine if you could troll the Supreme Court. Use your imagination. What would you do? Don't think I haven't considered it. Uh, yeah. It, well, it's worked for me in one case. There was this guy that kept hitting on me that I really just didn't like when I was in the Air Force. And he kept coming by my room to ask me out and stuff. So I ended up borrowing a... This is, you know, going to age me, but a cassette of Stormtroopers of Death. <gasps> <laughs> he kept blaring that. That scared him away. Oh. PMS Princess for the win. <laughs> Stormtroopers of Death. Um, Stormtroopers of Death, yes. Yeah. SOD. <laughs> That's that. Yeah. I, I, you know, of all the groups, I never would have expected that you would have known about that. That's really cool. <laughs> but I did. That's really cool. Well, what would the Stormtroopers of Love look like? Mm, I don't know. Oh. But every time he came by my room, I would pop that on, and it finally scared him away. <laughs> Good call. Um, and the Stormtrooper of Love, if memory serves, there was somebody that would go to various uh, comic conventions in a stormtrooper outfit that was just um pink fluffy unicorn dancing on rainbow pink mm. yeah okay. a, a, a stormtrooper uh, uh cross a stormtrooper with hello kitty in the overall cuteness factor that's that's what that was well gary newman did a song called stormtroopers and drag <laughs> That's a new one by me. Yeah. 
but it was uh, not alluding to Star Wars Stormtrooper. I, I would imagine. Yeah, I'll have to look that up later. Capricorn, you've oh. al- you've always hated. <clears throat> Try that again. You've always hated. I wrote them. You'd think I'd actually be able to pronounce all this stuff correctly, you know? You've always hated using neutral to coast downhill in your car, but these days that's not a bad way to economize your fuel use, right? So, once things have calmed down, remember all the lessons you've learned and keep using them. Drive the speed limits, brake earlier, and no matter what species you are, don't jackrabbit. Remember those PSAs back in the 70s? Don't jackrabbit. There's no speed limit on how fast I get up to the speed limit. I guess. I still drive that way. Makes the locals crazy. <laughs> but I get really good gas mileage. Well, Aquarius. Don't... Huh? Yeah, don't do that uh, uh, unless the person in front of you is going to do that too. Well, look, I stay that's out good of point. the fast lane. So, that's, yeah. a good, that's a good point. Aquarius, with hurricane season on us, you better be planning out your emergency supplies. Check for fresh batteries for your electronics, gas in your generator, potable water, and shelf-stable food. This means you're going to have to buy powdered coffee creamer and instant coffee. We know it'll hurt, but it's only for emergencies. It'll be better than nothing, if only barely. Yeah, remember... Heat stuff up with a candle, not with slowly burning C4. Yeah. Does that even burn slowly? Uh, uh, I see. Uh, yeah. Uh, hmm. Yes. He says guardedly. Slow is subjective. Yeah, that's true. I see. We've sent you to secondhand shops before and with good reason. Saucer or cup sets are cheap, clothing is too, but the best part is finding DVDs and Blu-rays for three. We have to cover this earlier. You can buy the full series of The West Wing for 20 and binge watch all you want. Come on. What better opportunity to watch Alice and Janney walk and talk mile, what? mile a minute and be good at it. Enjoy your TV time this week. For anybody that's watched The West Wing to watch CJ, CJ Craig walk and talk, just uh, just spitting stuff off left, right, center, and just be beautiful at it. Oh yeah, that that was amazing. That was amazing writing and amazing people they had doing it. And I have a, a true story and you're probably not going to believe this because I couldn't believe it either, but somebody had the whole series of West Wing on eBay. Okay. Did not have a minimum price on there. Guess who won the auction? Who? Me. Guess how much it cost me to get all of it. How much? Ten dollars and three cents. And how much of that went into shipping? Most of it went into shipping. Kind of figured. But that's all it cost me was ten dollars and three cents, and I got the whole series. Good on you. (laughs) And those are your horrible scopes for this week. If you like what you got, uh, good, because I actually tried to do that. I- if you didn't, I'm ter- terribly sorry. I tried. I actually did try. But, you know, it- it- it'll be what it'll be. I'll have these posted online at the end of the week when I work on the next set. So, uh, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, it's all good. I'll have them posted all over the place. I need to remember to post the, the link over on Discord. I need to make a channel for that or something. That might be a that might be a, a, a little something I should really give consideration to. Anyway, so that's about as much levity as what you're gonna get for the rest of the night, because we got a bunch of fuckos that we gotta talk about. I'm gonna open with Valdi. I'm gonna open with the police in general, not the police in Uvalde. I'm going to start with police in general because the courts in the United States have upheld legal principle that the police forces 
are under no legal obligation to go into dangerous situations to save people. Let me say that again. If the police go and there is a dangerous situation, they are under no legal obligation to be part of that to save people or property. I cannot tell you how fucking backwards that is to me and I'm sure to, well, Stephanie, I'm going to throw it out your way because, well, you've got, you got the Rogers to deal with out there. It's a different breed. For one thing, your guys don't exactly shoot people for the most part. And Joseph, because you are, well, you are Canadian and you've been living away from the Americas for long enough and you've seen everything over there instead. You mm-hmm. heard about this from from us before. What's your opinion on all that? Because I can't wait to hear this. We're talking about the su- Supreme Court, so. Well, in it, it was the Supreme Court that upheld it, but the idea that the courts in this country have said the police don't have an obligation oh, geez. to get yeah, into okay. dangerous situations and save people. Uh, well, I think, uh, I think a good lot of our leaders are people who would like to hold positions of authority without any consequences or without answering to anything at all. So why not the police too? Yeah, they get to, um, they don't have to go into uh, dangerous situations. They they get to tell you what to do. Or try to, at the very least. Well, when they have a gun, that's a pretty good argument. That, yeah, that, that, that is a thing over there. Well, not over here, but over there. But most officers here carry, um, and uh, uh, we've had a few, uh, well, there was an example, uh, oh God, it must be going back to like 2006, there was a, <clears throat> there was a gunman who uh, took a bunch of kids hostage, and, well, people tend to laugh, or especially Americans tend to laugh at the French, but uh, let's just say the the French police, uh, especially the national police, they don't fuck around. Good. That's actually, that's actually really good. Uh, And uh, I'm going to drop this over here because Stephanie had said it uh, before I finished my thought. Uh, Stephanie is saying, uh, we do have police who shoot people. They are a special force and highly trained. Interrupting for a second, good. In the U.S., that's typically the group that is referred to as SWAT, Special Weapons and Tactics. But, I'll come back to that in a second. But, uh, Stephanie continues, the common copper does not and has to call for backup. But in the U.K., the police prefer to talk than shoot. Thank you. Actually, if there's any sort of tense situation in the U.S., I would tend to get scared if a police officer showed up. It would yep. probably make it worse. Yep. 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 There are there are hundreds, easily, of videos where people who are of color, minorities, whatever, where they turn on their they turn on their phone cameras so that they can record what's going on for themselves and they will sit in their car when the police come up their hands are basically locked on the steering wheel and they will not release that steering wheel they simply will not 
because they will tell them, I don't want to be shot. I am not going to move. And how, how fucking terrifying is it to think that these, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to hold myself together because I said I wasn't going to yell. I'm not going to yell. I grew up, my father was a cop. I do still want to believe that he was a good cop in every sense of the expression. The idea that any of these Joe Schmo off the back of the cart police people with deadly weapons strapped to their side who could ventilate somebody in their car because I feared for my life and that's good enough to beat a murder rap it's oh, hard it's more, it's more insidious than that if they are up to no good and people are filming them you know some of them have gone as far as to try to play Disney music to keep it from going on YouTube Yes. Yes. And that is something that... Um, that is something that we know full well what they're doing and why they're doing it. For whatever reason, for the, for the folks that don't understand, there is, a, there is a contingent of people here in the U.S. and, and in other countries it's getting more and more who are First Amendment auditors, meaning that what they will do is they will get cameras and they will take photographs and take video out in public of public buildings, meaning things like police stations, town halls, government installations, stuff that is just seen from public view with the intent of finding out how do the police interact with people who are doing something that is absolutely 100% legal. Because of that, there are people who have taken up the same idea when there is a police thing that's going on there nearby. Everybody's got, you know, everybody's got their, their mobile device with them and it has audio video recording because you can't you can't lie to the camera and what they'll do is they'll start recording what's going on and the unscrupulous police and I'm, I'm using very very kind terminology you can probably guess right about now will have on their own devices like you said especially Disney music to start playing as loud as it will play on their device and they'll put it back into their pocket chest pocket so that it's loud enough because if anybody takes the video posts it on YouTube for everybody to see it immediately gets a copyright notice and taken down because Disney does that and those police officers as far as I'm concerned should be summarily dismissed because that is just I don't even know what the hell to call it at that point because they know for what, what it is that they're doing yep and they especially like to do that if they're hassling people who are homeless people who are homeless uh, people who are at a traffic stop um doesn't matter and it drives me up a freaking wall whenever I have this come up uh, Stephanie is suggesting block the sound on the video and use subtitles well now see the the problem with that of course is 
you don't get the. What do you mean? Yeah. Because if you if you block out the sound and you're using subtitles only, it's up to interpretation how accurate are the subtitles. And if you'll forgive the expression, you know, that's that's a fair cop. Even though we're talking about absolutely disgusting pieces of shit. Yeah, but when they start doing that, you you can be pretty sh certain that they're uh, up to no good. If I had it in me, if I had it in me, I would write an algorithm. I would write a program to be able to have video go through a filter. You tell it what song it is that's being played. It brings up the song and it does a reverse of the song from the audio to me almost mute the song to prevent the copyright hits. It wouldn't be able to take it all out, but enough to, you know, keep as much actual original audio as possible without getting a copyright hit. But I don't have any way of programming something like that because the last thing I actually properly programmed on was a Commodore 64 and somehow I don't think that comes across. Um, you have a link to it that's I haven't seen any of this this uh, this latest trend. Yeah, there've been um, uh, there've been news reports from uh, especially independent groups. Uh, I think the Young Turks had a a, a pod on it a while ago. Okay, but I it's it's them since a while. yeah, it, it it's it's something that uh, I remember having seen a couple of months ago was when it hit the, had its uh, first big splash, but. You know, as with everything else, so many other things have pushed it further and further back because, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, so the idea of police accountability is just so, it's just so fucked in this country. And that's why it finally brings us over to Uvalde. The police were in the building. Drama. The video shows that the police were in the building earlier than their official timetable that they that they released, and they adjusted and edited and updated several times. Apparently they were going, there, there was a good episode about this. Um, if you listen to Sam Harris, he had an episode about this, which is uh, not behind a paywall, but you can have a free account if you want. But anyways, um, apparently the, the police that were there were, quote unquote, doing it by the quote unquote book. And they had decided, they decided to follow the chapter where uh, it was host, it was a hostage situation and the shooter wasn't actively shooting people whereas the the shooter was shooting people but that didn't correspond to what they had decided so uh, they decided not to believe it or something along those lines and if memory serves, at that point, there were still active 911 calls coming from students. Yeah, and the police were more active trying to prevent the parents from going in. Put one woman in handcuffs who was able to convince one of the others that were there to cut her loose. And she made her way over into the danger zone, got her kid out. And there were a bunch of other parents ready to do exactly the same damn thing. Yeah. 
and they were unarmed. They were unarmed and they were choosing to put themselves into harm's way to save the kids. They had no shooter training. They had no body armor. They, they had no nothing. They had a desire to save the kids. And really, what's, what more could you want from a parent? I'd have done it. I'd have done exactly the same goddamn thing. I'd have gone in there. I would have done anything and everything that I could have done. The sad part of it is, can you imagine what would have happened if all of the parents that were there simply rushed through the police and overwhelmed them with numbers? What would they have done? Would they have opened fire on the parents? Probably. Oh, no. You can't know. I mean, that that's what... You're you know, right. Because we, if you... If you put people without, yeah, I don't know where to start. Um, but there doesn't seem to be much rational thought going on. There seems to be like in a situation where people tend to react first and think later. Um, and plus, uh, add to that our inability to read minds. Um, yeah, who the hell knows what's going through their head? It's true. It's true. Like the, the, uh, just to kind of comedy relief illustrate the point. Remember when there was this um oh it was a while back about five years ago. I think we covered it on the show. Um there were uh, there's video footage of a bunch of police uh, intervening on a pool party. And like there's this scene where the police officer, I don't know who filmed it, but um, there were just like a couple kids standing by a tree and, and the cop gets out of his car and he does like a duck and roll yep. movement before pulling his gun, like on the kids. Yeah. I remember that. That was about two or three years ago. Um, yeah. You know, like a nine year old girl. Yeah. I guess she was black. Yeah. Like. Just what the fuck? I can't even begin to put myself in. Uh, no, I, I I can't either. I'm, I'm right there uh, with you. The only thing I can explain. Wait, wait. You you you, you work your or you work you work your neurons to try to put yourself in that kind of place. But uh, the only thing I can come up, up with is just a total lack of neurons. I mean, a total lack of training. No, and and I'm right on board with you. Mm. Stephanie's also pointed out. I hate to I hate to bring this up, but how many of the victims bled out as the police hid away? It makes me feel sick. Yeah, but there were there were people while the police were in the hallway there were people being killed. Yep. Still. Part of part of of the report and we I intentionally did not mention this earlier on previous shows because of the nature of it the local emergency medical people uh, ER doctors uh, and, and trauma folks uh, had said that being hit with the weapon in question is not something that you can easily survive, even with emergency treatment in some cases. And the official reports do say that some of these children were decapitated because of the bullets.
and that the only reason that one of these children was identifiable was for very specifically the shoes that she was wearing. I intentionally did not want to talk about that in previous shows because of the nature of it. And I think you can understand why now. I am a parent. I'm a single father. Were my wife still alive and heard stories like this, I do not have any idea how I could ever console her. This is nowhere near where we live. This is down Texas way, and we live up over here in New York, outside of Buffalo. And yes, we've had our thing recently too, but I don't, I, I don't, I don't even, I don't even know how to process that. As far as I'm concerned, the entire police force down there should simply resign in shame. But there is no shame in this group whatsoever, it would seem. And especially not for the leader of that entire group. I don't care what his actual title is. He's just a leader who refuses who refuses to acknowledge the reality of what happened. They had all these stories. They 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 said that this happened and then they said that that happened and it was a tragic event that a door was propped open and unlocked because a teacher went out there trying to blame it on that fucking teacher when they could have dealt with it and solved the problem in about three minutes. If only they had done the job that we expect of police. You know, let me well. let me ask you too. Do you, I, do you still have the expectation in your heads that if there is, if there is a dangerous situation that you would need to call the police for, that the police would actually go in and deal with whatever a dangerous problem would be? I'm terrified of the police. They scare me. They have scared me for years. I've been terrified of cops since 1977, and it's only gotten worse. And if I happen to have one that is following me when I'm driving, it scares the hell out of me, even though I haven't done anything wrong, my tags are up to date, I don't speed. I haven't gotten a speeding ticket since I was 16. And it was for going three miles over the speed limit. Um, they terrify me. Yeah, well, the police are pretty cool here in France. I mean, um, uh, cool by cool headed. Um, Yeah, we we do tend to um, the, this uh, a situation can derive into um, let's just say lack of imagination, um, but uh, well, I think the same rule applies. You know, anywhere in the world, if you're stopped by the police, you just obey whatever they tell you to do. And if you have to go to the police station and all that, well, you can sort it out there. Just get out of that situation where you're one-on-one -on -one with the, the police officer who probably can't make any sort of um, <clears throat> decision themselves whether other than whether to arrest you or not or to take you to the station. Well, I mean, I've still got family in Mississippi. And I can tell you that down there, if there happens to be any kind of a, a domestic disturbance, 
and it doesn't matter who starts it, what's going on, but if you call the police down there, for, uh, both of your asses are going to jail. It doesn't matter who started it, who did what, they arrest both of you. So the incentive there is not to call the police and get them involved. Because who wants a police record? Yep. Yep. Because one of the things that happens here in the U.S. is, uh, as an example, employment applications. The yep. question will be, have you ever been arrested? Mm-hmm. And arrested has nothing whatsoever to do with guilt. You've not been tried in court. You've not been found guilty of having done anything wrong or right, as the case may be. It could be that you were protesting and there was a crackdown on protests. Geez, when did we last hear about that happening? Today. It's getting ugly out there, too. I saw videos earlier of people in Phoenix that are out protesting. And so, what's going on now? Uh, you know, they're lobbing tear gas canisters from, you know, uh, I just went blank. Lobbing, you know, tear gas canisters out of government building windows at people who are peacefully protesting. Good Christ. And I was going to bring up another thing, too. She, Jen, and I were talking about, you know, state laws, you know, versus uh, you know, federal law. laws and all yeah. other stuff. And, uh, you know, he was talking about how, you know, he might be better off than some other place in the country because he lives in New York. But, you know, Scott's decision Thursday kind of gets rid of that as well. And I'm specifically, you know, referring to the decision to where... You know, New York has had laws on the books for hundreds of years now to where you have to have specific requirements for concealed carry. And uh, SCOTUS ruled uh, th those are not valid. You can't have certain state laws now to uh, infringe upon your Second Amendment rights. So they, you know, say that they're all about states' rights and, and let's turn things back to the states until they're, until they're not. Yeah, that's a that's a whole other piece. Um, Stephanie had two things. Uh, have you seen Bo's latest video? The message is never talk to a cop, get a lawyer. That is something that I have seen on many videos uh, mm -hmm. where where uh, these First Amendment auditors, especially, or people who have started recording themselves at a traffic stop. They have they have basically done the whole thing of how far are you going to roll down your window? Uh, you know, a couple a couple of thumb widths worth. So that you can talk through. Could you roll your window down more? No. This is good enough. I can hear you. I'll speak up if you can't hear me. And they'll still do it. Where are you going? What can I do for you, officer? Don't talk to him. Don't engage. Just, just don't. Well, Don't that was both to. point too, especially now after saying that that you know you no longer have to have your Miranda rights read to you. Don't say shit. Yep. Yeah. And that's another one from ninety. Oh God, what the hell year was that? Was that sixty five? Pretty sure it was in the mid sixties. The Miranda warnings. Uh, for those that don't recall what the Miranda Roarings are, it, it is the, the item that is typically on police procedurals in the, in the U.S. The whole, um, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law, that, that, that whole rigmarole. That was never, up until the 60s, if I remember what year it came out, that was never something that was a thing. And then it went up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court basically said, yeah, you know what? Um, you have an obligation to tell people when they're under arrest what their, what their legal rights are at that point. And I remember in my dad's uh, hat, because he had one of those old traditional, 
you know, police hats, not not a baseball cap. Which, by the way, I fucking hate that. I fucking hate that. The police have got baseball hats. That's nice. No, I like the good old traditional paramilitary looking hats. But then again, but he had a he had an insert in the top of his hat on the inside, laminated piece that actually had the Miranda warning so that if if for any reason he needed he needed to remember what it was if he forgot just take off the hat just read it right off done deal officer did you read the man as Miranda writes yes sir how did you remember them I have them on a page on the inside of my hat here's where it looks like this is what it says this is what I read okay but now yeah they they say no you don't have to go ahead and do that people already know what their rights are you're under no obligation to help them up a goddamn wall and down the other side um oh yeah and the other one was that uh, uh there was a lovely video of some swedish police taking down a serious troublemaker on an american subway they were properly trained of course and did so without hurting anyone they were over to give training i don't remember I don't remember hearing news about this one recently, but I remember a couple of years ago seeing something similar, or uh, it might be the same one that we're thinking of. But yeah, when that happens, it just makes me, I want to say, shamed at the policing in this country. The woeful lack of training for police forces in this country overall now there are some there are some good actors don't get me wrong there are some people that go into the police force same way that there are people that go into nursing or go into teaching who have the best of intentions and stand by those and do the honorable and right things for what's expected for them but god damn there are too damn many that just don't Yeah, and Stephanie was saying it was a while ago. Yeah, so yeah, be that as it may, still the fact that it happened. I think it's fair to. Um, I think it's fair to uh, go over into uh, dealing with the big coat hanger in the room at this point, don't you think? Yeah. And it's not going to stop there. No, it's not. <clears throat> it finally came I mean, down this week, officially, from the Supreme Court of the United States, effectively gutting, yes, I am using that word intentionally, the protections that Roe versus Wade provided for people with uterus to freely and legally receive abortion services now that is not what the original legal thing was it was all about the privacy but apparently after well let's see Clarence Thomas was put onto the Supreme Court in well let's see it was during Reagan's term which means it would have been somewhere between 1980 and 1988. I don't remember what year it was. No, wait. Yes. Because he was elected for two terms in 1980 after Jimmy Carter. Right. I don't remember what year it was. And truth be told, doesn't really matter. He is one of the earliest ones that I can specifically remember. And... He was one of those people that said Roe versus Wade is, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, is accepted law. It, it, it is. Bridget, remind me, what's the, what's the term? Story decisis. Story decisis. And it is precedent that other, uh, that other cases will be 
tried against. So the evangelicals, the religious people in the Republican Party finally got the majority that they needed to gut that so that this whole abortion thing is no longer protected. It's not their original intent, though. Evangelicals in the 70s, even the Southern Baptist Convention, were in support of abortion. They latched on to this because it was uh, about wanting to be able to legally discriminate against black people in places like Bob Jones University. It traces back that far. And there are GOP politicians now, as recently as two days ago, who have said the same thing. I can't remember the na her name off the top of her head, but she said that this was a great victory for white Christians. And she invoked the name of Hitler and said that Hitler had some good ideas. And yes, she's running for a government position. I can't remember who she is. I would have to go Google, but um, yeah, they said the quiet part, part out loud. Yeah. Well, the whole thing about abortion, it's just using the a moral gray area just to shoehorn in authority. Yeah. Basically, it's a few who would, uh, you know, uh, tell us what's best for us. Basically, <laughs> it's fascism, basically. It's instead really of us, in, instead of us getting together, oh, well, why don't, why don't we have a referendum on um, abortion? Why not open up the question nationwide? Let's have a talk about this. Because they would but, lose. <clears throat> well, that's it. Yeah. Yep. Seventy percent of the country is still in support of abortion rights. Maybe they might want some limits on, you know, how how far into the pregnancy that you can have it. You know, they, you know, people are in disagreement. You know, whether it should be 15 weeks, 20 weeks, whatever, but most people are not. I'm not, I'm not saying, position. I'm not saying put it directly to a vote. That would be like suicide. I mean, start a conversation. Oh, if they put it least. to a vote, then this no, would not have what passed. I'm, what, I'm, what I'm proposing is to start at least a platform so that conversation is possible. But instead, we have uh, a bunch of quote unquote higher ups, uh, well, just telling us what to do and people more or less accepting it. The worst part about it is, is that it it's it's dictatorial. No, sorry. It is theocratic rule by mm -hmm. a few over the masses. Yeah. And um, it, what, it doesn't have to be even theocratical. You could put whatever you want, whatever idol, whatever leader character you want in there but the it, behavior the behavior is always the same but it is theocratical because as outlined in the in the ruling uh with the whole privacy thing they also want the you know uh marriage quality to go they want the right to get birth control to go they want the right to privacy gone yeah, they basically want total control over you. They want to decide who you marry, how you marry, what job you do, how many children you're going you're gonna to have. Um, they're going to do their damnedest to make sure that your children are going to be just as gullible as you so that their thing can continue. And that's basically it. And I mean, uh, you can make comparisons there between, I'm sorry for going Godwin, but, uh, you know, between Hitler's Germany and... Uh, the Catholic Church, they both want the same thing. They want a compromised, non-thinking, obeying population. Yeah, I, I don't we'll have all a behave the same way. Yeah, I don't have but a problem with you trying taking... to bring back the, the, you know, the gender norm roles, too, though. That's part of this as well. 
Yeah. Well, anything outside of the gender norm is not profitable to whoever's doing the discrimination. And that's basically comes down to that. I mean, um, gay couples don't have children. They can't make productive believers. And the sad no, part of it is... this is going to affect women mostly, though. I mean, men are going to be hurt, too. Yes. What I was going to say was, uh, the, the sad part of it is, same-sex partners who cannot have children together themselves, although with certain bits and pieces of technology women could conceivably conceive, be that as it may for a second here, they would be, in some cases, willing familial units for kids who don't have familial units already. I mean... Yeah. <clears throat> if they had some imagination, they could very well impose... Um, well, what about, you know, all those kids that you're not allowed to abort? Well, they go into foster homes and... Uh, and are adopted well well great if uh, gay couples can adopt kids uh, oh, they, 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 could, they could even impose it as a law that uh, well if you don't want to have your regular Christian marriage then you have to take care of uh, non-aborted children um, this is not coming from me this is just kind of like a oh I got you to see of some sort of yeah I, I, I totally but, get you over there. But these people have no fucking imagination at all. No. No. And they have to go. They won't yeah, allow gay people to uh, adopt anymore. And this is also going to do away with in vitro fertilization. So you're not going to be able to biologically have your own child if you're gay. Um, we're going to go back to, especially if you cannot get birth control anymore, we're going to go back to the way that it was not so long ago when employers would not hire women of childbearing age because they didn't want to have to deal with somebody being out on maternity leave. Um, I, I'm old enough to remember, you know, before 1974 that women could not even get credit cards in their own name. Yep. We're going to go back there. Yep. Stephanie is also pointing out, and, and rightly so, I don't think that we did it. I don't think that we did it tonight, which is, which is good. But also reminding everybody, please never call this medieval. In the Middle Ages, the mother's life was more important as A, she could always get pregnant again, and B, who would look after the children she had if she died? True. And I... let's also have a little shout out to the folks in, if I remember right, it's in Florida where the Jewish community is going up against the state to basically say, look, um, we're, by our religion, we're not only allowed to, but we are encouraged, we are have an obligation for the woman to have an abortion if it's necessary to protect her life. So does your state right, does your state law supersede the RIFRA laws? that are put into place remember those i really hope that that i really hope that that smacks the shit out of florida but it won't though but i can dream because it's only the christian uh version that applies yeah and you know marjorie three names with her you know everybody is entitled to carry at any time uh, I guess that would work for school children as well. You know, the only, you know, the only person or only child that can stop a bad person from killing children is a good child armed with the gun who can stop the bad guy. Yeah, well, we've already found out that that, that doesn't exactly work that way, now does it? It doesn't, but that's what she would say. I believe the expression that I'm looking for right about now is, um, she can eat a dick. Yeah. Just, just saying. I would have otherwise used, uh, go fuck dirt, but, um, no, 
you know, because because there's no analog for, uh, you know, go pound beach sand. Because, I mean, if we're, if we're going to go ahead and we're going to say, you know, get dirt and everything, uh, beach sand. Yeah, I, I, I know of which I speak. Yeah, but the video that of uh, Jamie Raskin tearing her a new one was great. I don't know if you saw that one or not, but that was delicious. Not as yet, but then again, considering how things have gone, fine by me. I'm, I'm more than happy here. Yeah, somebody tore her a new one. Good. I believe you. It's not talking a about very high you know ball. by he was you know, it was in the rules committee and he was asking her. So by your admission you say that all of these people who were, you know, insurrectionists and you know, on January sixth should have been armed and she's like, Well you don't have any evidence that people came there armed and he's like, Oh yes we do and you're going to see it in the hearing. You know what I uh what I had as part of the opening tonight? Having somebody pointing out that questions were being asked of Republicans, written by Republicans, asked by Republicans, I'm very much having a great time with people who are just like going to these these Trump rallies and engaging people in, in questions and well well, what do you think about this? I don't. I don't think it's true. Oh, really? Well, um, here, let, let me show you. Let me show you a piece. And showing them pieces of the uh, uh, the committee meetings, and some of them are just like having a really hard time sidestepping into whatever the next thing is. And I very much like the ones where they're just. Uh, I don't. I don't know what to think of that now. I don't expect these people to turn on a dime, so to speak. But the opportunity of being able to engage with these people, first off, there's no way in hell I'm that good an actor. I am not an actor. I would never be able to do that without trying so hard to, you know, not spit up in my own throat. But being able to engage with these people and show them video of these testimonies that are happening and having the people just having a hard time coming to grips with it I think that's progress they're not going to change straight away but it's just that first chink in the armor you know I'm really glad for that part There's just so much of this whole damn thing. Backtracking. We mentioned about how the Supreme Court in the U.S. has effectively gutted the Roe versus Wade. And one of the things that's been circulating is a supercut, if you will, of all of the people who are on the court see how I said that all the people who are on the court in their confirmation hearings who had gone ahead and said that the Roe versus Wade issue was already a done deal it's precedent it's starry decisis did I say that right mm -hmm. okay I I keep forgetting what the hell the word is and I I I keep wanting to say it wrong because of whatever. I'll spell it for you. It, it's not going to help. It, yeah, it will. Okay, you, you, you go ahead, type. But like I said, somebody put together a supercut of these people who have said that this is settled law, this is precedent, this is, this is something done. And each one of them all said effectively the same damn thing. Which means that for 40 years, this has been brewing. And 
This has just been waiting. This has been a ticking time bomb. And one of the worst culprits for why this worked out the way that it did was Mitch fucking McConnell. I would like to lay some of the blame at the feet of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but, you know, she she did what she thought was right. It was obviously, in hindsight, a bad idea, you know, to just up and die like that, but you know, be that as it may. But Mitch fucking McConnell helped to... No. Helped is the wrong word. He orchestrated this court. He finagled. He cheated this court into the design that it is now. He cheated. No, it's worse than that. He outright conspired and lied in absolute bad faith in order to get what we've got now. Now, the problem that I've got is I am seeing, and I am also of the same opinion, that these people on the Supreme Court who have done this should be investigated and impeached. And I've got two problems with this. And I'm saying this because I am honest and I am a good actor item one the the answer to this I do not know when someone goes up to a to a hearing with the Senate for confirmation are they sworn in under oath to answer the questions of the committee honestly and without lying. I don't know what the answer to that is. Item two. The Supreme Court of the United States does itself not have any kind of ethics body to be judged against. That second one is a major problem for me. But that first part, going in for, uh, for confirmation hearings, I don't know if these people are supposed to be sworn in so that if they say something that is a lie, if they can be brought up for perjury later. I would really like that to be the case. But then don't they also have something along the lines of I thought that it I thought that it was uh, it was settled law, but this case comes in and you know, we got to judge it on its merits and well, look at that. It just so happens that it completely contradicts the, what we thought was precedent and it oopsie. Don't know what to tell you. It just happened that way which is a bullshit lie and we all know it but you know at this point what the hell could we do yeah, there definitely needs to be some changes in ethics laws and it's it's just amazing that there are none and impeachment is out of the question as well yeah yeah and probably for the same reason because Stephanie just said Biden should have packed the court. The problem is we still have these two sons of bitches who are far more Republican than they are Democrat to start off with. Never mind the fact that we've got the, the Congress that's just all over the goddamn map to try and get things done. There's but, only been one impeachment of 
uh, of SCOTUS, and that was in the 1800s, and the person survived impeachment, so. Yep. Part of the problem is, we know full well that in order to do the right thing at this point, that there has to be an overwhelming majority of one political party in order to get the job done. The problem is, how do you separate that from what they would do on the opposite side of completely and utterly packing whatever group and enacting whatever it is that they think is the right thing to do, which is exactly what's happened with this court. And that would continue to happen with each cycle. You know, we could pack the court. It would help short time, but yeah, you know, short term, but then it would get repacked again whenever the GOP was back in power and it would go back and forth and back and forth. But sorry, I had to, uh, I hope I didn't hope you, I, yeah, I had to go away for a second there. It's okay. Um, but keep in mind at the same time, uh, why the, uh, Christian right or whatever you want to call them. The, uh, no, that's, that's fair. Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, what was the term? I heard a good term for that. The Christian nationalists. They are, um, they're Christian nationalists. Yeah. They're oh, Christian whatever. Fascists. Well, I just called them fascists, but, um, Christo fascists. Yeah. Well, yeah. Why not? I mean, just the, you know, the shoe fits. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, at the same time, the reason they're in such a rush to do all of this is because the, well, the numbers of, uh, faithful, quote, the believers, survived by imitators, whatever you want to call them, um, they're, they're dwindling. Oh, yes. So, you know, if we stack the courts, uh, that may buy enough time for, reason to take hold or at least uh you know it will buy us some time yeah you're exactly right i mean we bit. yeah we talked about that uh, a long time ago where we we uh, you in particular joseph you were one of the people that uh that had said that what we're what we are seeing are the final death throes of of religious um, I don't remember what the terminology was that we were using at the time, but basically a uh, religious overview of the populace is having its last thro throws, uh, it it's, it's death rattle because it's trying to lash out at every last thing that it can while it still has any force whatsoever because it's, it's, it's dying. It's, it's dying slowly or quickly, depending on how you look at it, but it is dying. Yep. How but long is it going to take to unfuck it, though? And I'm going to and I'm oh, going to bring it, it Iran as as an example. 1979. Yeah, I think it could be pretty quick, actually. It because um, you know, once people start to become implicated in the political system and reason takes hold. Well, just overturning laws, um, you know, such as the abortion one or whatever. Um, I don't think it's going to take much time at all. It's easier said than done, though, Joseph. I mean, like but, I said, look, look at what happened in Iran in the Well, we have, to, we have to start somewhere. We just can't throw up our sand, hands in the air and just say, oh, well, we can't do anything. I mean, I don't know how many times I've rallied against doing that you know that sort of attitude but we we can't just give up it is really There's tough the, yeah oh hell yeah never said it was going to be easy but um we're, we're at a crossroads right now so you know if the climate does become one where voices of reason reason are crushed um well, the coming generations, they're not going to have any access to reason. 
and uh, the people who are seeking to control everything, well, they're going to be the only option out there. Let me put a little bit of levity into this for just a couple of seconds because it, it, it it's it's worth doing. I don't know if anybody else knew about it. I had to have it pointed out to me. During the uh, during the January 6th committee meeting earlier this week, I didn't see it because of the way that uh, the uh, the bottom third of most um, newscasts here in the United States, there is a uh, there is typically some graphics that are in the bottom third on our show. Obviously, that bottom third or part of it is just simply taken up with the name of the episode. But I mean, I could put anything over in there, however I feel like it. And you've probably seen it with your own news services where, you know, there's a logo and there's a scrolling ticker tape of whatever the hell is going on. Maybe the breaking news headlines or whatever is going on with the, uh, I, I, I remember all too well, you know, waking up on a, on a cold winter day and watching the scroll at the bottom to find out if my school district was open or closed. But because of that, somebody that was sitting behind one of the people that was testifying was wearing a Starfleet pendant pin on their lapel. Saw that. (laughs) And because of this, there are a number of people who now have latched onto the and they are admitting, they are admitting that it is all in fun, conspiracy theory. It's not an actual conspiracy theory. They're just having fun with it. That maybe it's somebody from the time police who are checking and watching to make sure that everything is right, and they just forgot to take off their badge. You know, making sure that everything is actually progressing the way that it's supposed to. I love this idea. I wish it were a real thing because that would mean that goddamn time travel is actually a thing eventually but um i i i never would have known because the because the way that stuff was and somebody found uh, a version of the video without the without a bottom third on it and sure shit there it was guys got a guys got a thing right there it was great might have been from the 24th century could have been could have been or they could be making sure that nobody's interfering with the prime directive could have been. Could have been. I I just I just love the idea that we know full well that the concept of time travel is science fiction for us currently. Is time travel possible to the past? Don't know. Into the future, yeah. There there are plenty of ways of making that happen. To the past. Uh, but let's face it, the idea that somebody could have put that on as some kind of silent protest of sorts, or maybe as just a symbolic don't give up hope symbol, I really, really like that possibility a lot. I don't know who it was, I don't know what they did it for. But I'd really, really like to believe that it was just a silent. We're still in this together. We could still have the possibility of a, a bright future ahead. I'd really like to believe that. But I just thought that was just funny as hell to find out about it. Maybe what? It's- Hum? Um, great, great, great timing. What's that? What, what, what's, what's great timing? Just showed up. Oh, I finally got you. But I wanted to go back to Joseph's point, though. I'm, I mean, I know what you're saying about not giving up hope and all that. Um, you know, most of the people in Iran were not, you know, wanting the Ayatollahs to take over. And they tried very hard in 2003, you know, to overthrow the Ayatollahs again and take back their government. And they got the shit beat out of them. So, 
you know, they want different, but they haven't been able to get different. They've been trying. So we shouldn't do anything. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that because of the age of the people on SCOTUS right now, with most of them being on the younger side, you know, we're fucked for a generation. Until what? Until we can, until some of them die off and we can get unfucked. Yeah, but things are getting worse. Yes, they are. And they, <laughs> and they will. And they will so continue. it's going to be, so it's going to be even harder for future generations. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to oh. continue to get worse. I mean, we are a nation in decline. That's pretty obvious. Okay, so like it's the powers that be that decide everything, or is it us? No, no, no. You, you. One, one second. Finally, being able to join us from travels and whatnot on Renault Tech from the East Coast of U.S. Hi, good morning. Hello. All right, I'll get to you in a second. All right, um, but Joseph, it's it's. Part of the problem that we've got is that, yes, it's disheartening, to put it nicely, but it is what it is. And the people that have been empowered through whatever methodology it is that they've used, and yes, I'm using that terminology because how many people are in positions of political power forgive me for popping like that because of gerrymandered voting districts too many so yeah there's going to be the problem of entropy this car is sliding there's no way of stopping the car from sliding and it's going to get worse for a bit because it's been set into motion that way but it doesn't mean that this car is going completely over a cliff. At least, not yet. And we just have to fight like goddamned hard in order to bring this thing back to straight. And that's, that's the problem. It's going to take time in order to get that to happen and to pick up speed. And it's going to be, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a slag. And it is not out of the realm to say some of us might not see it in our lifetimes. Yeah, that's accurate. And that is disheartening as all hell. But it is still a but worthwhile this is endeavor. A yeah, well, this is a conversation we have to have. Like, if we want things to change, how are we going to go about doing it? And this this kind of, you know, we're, we're protesting against individual acts and um, trends. But I think we need to dig deeper and uh, and have a look at the actual cause of the trends and the motives of the acts and address that. And as far as I'm concerned, it comes down to um, complacency. I don't want to call most people lazy, but I mean, there seems to be a certain lack of implication in the political system that depends on us I mean, you know, where we're feeding upwards, the you know, the chain goes upwards now. And we're feeding the top of the stack, and there's nothing coming back. And you're um, right. Yeah, we there, should be addressing that. Yeah, there is and, a, I'm sorry. Yeah, but just to, just to finish, but actually it's them who are dependent on us at the same time as they tell us what to do. But they depend on us. Without us, they are nothing. And what I was going to say is that you, you're you're right. The complacency that you're referring to, I have levied that a couple of times over, because the the drive for public service is no longer for public service; is for being in positions of authority 
And through that, money. It's no longer doing for the greater good. It's doing better monetarily for me. Not me personally, but me, the person that's in, in, in these political positions. You, you get the idea. And because of that, it intentionally squeezes out the little guy. So to borrow from a, an old song, them that's got tend to get more while the weak ones fade. I'm going to ask Joseph at the same time when we're talking, you know, stacked courts and we're talking at district level, state level, federal level, SCOTUS. When you have these stacked courts that are with lifetime appointments and a lot of these people that have been appointed are in their late 40s and early 50s, what do you propose we do about that? Like we said earlier, expand the, uh, expand at a, for starters, um, expand the, uh, the number of, uh, Supreme Court but members. What if that's not possible though. Well, let, let me finish. What, uh, what if, what if, uh, the, the, again, I mean, uh, how will you know until you try? It's perfectly possible. The system allows it. The the system does, but there are specific individuals who have consistently and decisively derailed any attempts at even lesser change. Yeah, well, first you try, and when that doesn't work, uh, you're going to see the people who are going to come out against that. It's going to be very clear. I mean, we already have Mitch McCall on our in our sites we already have we we know who the uh the the belligerents are and they're going to come out of the woodwork as long as the system is exactly working exactly the way that they want it to which means uh us feeding the top of the chip the the food chain you know we're not going to see them but as soon as anyone in our ranks uh tries to to make um, an individual decision or a collective decision or whatever, just anything from if, if, if we at our level try to make a decision to try to impose our will or even make heard our will, well, these people are going to come out of the woodwork. They're going to be the first and they're going to become a target for our well, they're going to be they're going to be put in the spotlight. I guess become a target is not the greatest way of putting that. But do you see what I mean? I got you. There's no one catch-all solution that's going to be instantaneously. I mean, look how long it took for the Christian right to build up the shit they're doing now. They've been working since the end of the Second World War for this, and it's all coming to fruition now. But it's the result of just chip, 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 chip. While we did nothing. There's a good portion of that. Uh, Tech, I know that you came in uh, kind of kind of late to the whole damn thing, but um, considering that there isn't uh, a hell of a lot of time, Anything that you want to add in on on this? Because uh, I'm I'm making I'm going to be making sure that you got yourself uh, you know your your vent time in here because Lord knows you're waiting for it. I say it's power of ten, right? Oh hell yeah! Oh okay. yeah! Fuck 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 shit fuck fuck shit fake motherfucker cocksucking son of a bitch goddamn it motherfucker such suck a dick eat a fucking pine cone up the asshole. I think that's about it. You know what? Oh it. And watch the latest episode of uh, The Boys. <laughs> <laughs> no, all, all, all joking aside. Oh, that um, wasn't joking earlier when we were talking those kinds of... You know, the only one that we didn't use was eat a pine cone up the ass. I, we didn't use that one. So um, that, that, was, that was well done. It was good. I think that was the only thing missing from that episode. <laughs> uh, well, you know... Uh... 
there's the uh, comedy movie Little Nicky, where uh, Hitler's in hell dressed up in a maid outfit, and the Satan has his uh, lunch every day with Satan. Satan has to pick out a pineapple and bend over. And he always tries to pick out the little one. Satan makes him pick out the big one. And then just before ramming it where the sun don't shine, turns the pineapple around points first. I think that's what we should do to these judges. Give them a proverbial version of that. Remember, your votes actually count. But you have to use them. We don't have people using them. If you have people in your state gerrymandering and constantly redistricting, get them out. Find the people that are willing to run, who will stop that, who will put laws into place to, to, to cancel that out. Vote those people in. Vote in the people who can make these little things happen so that when you get some asshat in there who wants to take away your stuff, now their hands are tied. Okay, I'm not talking about oh, I'm going to have to register my gun so I can't vote in that guy because he wants registration or that woman because she wants registration. I have to register my car for fuck's sake. And I could kill somebody with that too. It doesn't mean I want to. Getting it repaired sucks. But, you know, registering a firearm doesn't mean taking a firearm away. And if the government's coming for your guns, there's nobody in this country that is prepared to fight down a tank. You know, there is nothing a homeowner can own legally that is going to prepare them for the battle with the U.S. military or SWAT. Not even the bad guys have the firepower to handle SWAT and a tank. Okay, that's why SWAT has, like, freaking tanks. All right? Registering a firearm? Big whoop de doo Holding people accountable if they let their firearms get in the hands of their children? Hey, we hold them accountable if they get a hold of their family's car. Same thing. Cars can be used to kill, so can guns. Hold them accountable. We'll see some changes in, in, in how guns are treated and handled in households. They should be respected if you have one. Okay, Kids that don't respect them, maybe you shouldn't have it in the household then. Until the kid can learn. And if the kid can't be trusted, if they got something mentally wrong, don't have guns in the house. End of story. Plain and simple. You want your gun? Keep it at the at, at the the rifle range. Rent a locker or some shit. Right? This is not hard, people. And if you've got uh, somebody running in there who says, "Oh, I'm going to make it easy for everybody to get a gun at any time," that means it's also going to be easy for the people who want to kill your kid to get a gun at any time, or your wife, or your husband or your nephew, or your niece, or your mom, or your dad, okay? Or your best friend who lives down the street, best friend in a neighboring state, doesn't matter. Have some decency, people, okay? Stop yelling, sit down, listen to each other, find what's common. Stop looking at the goddamn differences. Find what is common, okay? Atheists, Jews, and Christians, Muslims, we all have something in common. We're on the same damn planet. We all have blood. We all need to eat, sleep, breathe, drink water, things like that, or we die. And we can all be killed by a bullet through the brain or heart very quickly. Guess what? We have a lot in common. Sit down. Get a handle on shit. Find the people who are making a divide between you. There are religious leaders who are doing it on purpose. There are politicians who are doing it on purpose. There are police doing it on purpose. There are a lot of people doing it on purpose. Remove them from your lives. It might be a family member. It might be a friend. It might be a stranger. The people who are causing derision, divisiveness, FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, get rid of them. It's a different story when you have a politician go, look, these are my goals. I don't know if I'll be able to accomplish them in my term, but I will do my best to set the foundation. That is a realistic politician. They do exist. Vote them in. The other one who goes, vote for me and everything's going to be fine, is lying through their fucking teeth. As an aside to that, by the way, Stephanie, I am so hoping that this is prophetic. 
but we don't believe the prophet, of course, but anyway, said, uh, the Republican faithful are starting to turn on Moss. Those hearings all horrifying them. The elections in November are going to be interesting. True that. That is going to be incredibly interesting. Heck, I've got elections coming up next month in my in my state, in area for all sorts of different positions, commissioners, um, uh, 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 not not ombudsman. Um, oh, the people who handle money. God, now I can't think of the name. It's late, but we have all sorts of positions from sheriff to you name it, in multiple counties, all coming up for votes. And like I told my son, you know, you gotta vote. I've done my research. I know who I'm voting for. I haven't told him who because it's none of his business. It's none of my folks' business. It's not my girlfriend's business. It's not my friend's business. Why? Because that's not what I care about of whether or not I'm talking with them about why my vote, you know, who I'm voting for, is important. If I want to discuss the candidates, I will discuss the candidates. But I won't say which one is my favorite, which one is the one that I'm going for. I will discuss the pros and cons of each. And if I think some have merit, I might mention that those have merit. If I feel good about somebody, I feel good about somebody. I might feel good about three different candidates real good, but I can only vote for one of them, depending on what the position is. You know, sometimes you vote for multiple judges, sometimes you vote for multiple whatever, but that's not always the case. And some positions, some positions run un... Um, what do they call it? When there's no competition? Uh, unopposed. Yeah, unopposed. Whether you vote for them or not, they win. So, you know, if you know that somebody's running unopposed and you have a friend that's really good in that field, maybe they're an excellent finance officer and they're running, you know, for a position that has to deal with the county finances and your county's been hurting on finances, talk to your friend and go, look, this person's running unopposed. Maybe you should run. You're really good at finances. You really do the stuff well. You help out a lot of people. People know your name. Go run. Put your name out there. The worst that's going to happen is you're not going to win. You know? Go to a local paper. Go to a local news press. Hey, look, a local's running. This is not some politician who doesn't even live here. This is a local. I can't believe This it. is the underdog. I can't believe I'm going to say this. You know, the job market isn't exactly great these days. What better opportunity to go ahead and see if you can get yourself a job? Government jobs pay pretty well. Yeah. I'm teasing some, just a little bit. But at the same time, you're not exactly wrong. Yeah. Some of those government jobs actually come with pensions when you retire. That's some kind of security right there. I'm not saying go for it just for that. But if you have the skill set, that person's running unopposed. That person, you know, you hear people not saying good things about Maybe you have a shot, and you never even knew it until you ran for it. Okay? It's, it's possible. Depends on where you're at, though, because there Agreed. were several people that I, you know, supported and wanted to run in my state. But if we don't have enough signatures to qualify for the ballot, then you're disqualified. That so I, that. You know what? I get it completely. I really do. And that makes perfect sense. But at the same time, you can still try to see if you get those ballots. You might not. You know, it might not happen. Okay. I, I get it. Um, but it doesn't hurt to give it a shot. There's that. Because the worst that's going to happen, like I said, is you're not going to win. We got And at least... No, go at ahead. least you can... And plus you can sleep at night knowing that at least you tried. That's There's... more than anybody else. If somebody's running unopposed, it means nobody else is really, really trying. Or it means that at least a few people tried, but they probably didn't get the vote. But if you run and you don't get the vote, you know that you at least ran, and other people know that you ran. We're up to uh, the top of the hour, which means we gotta oh, we got to wrap ourselves together over here. Uh, oh, and... The guy, like, I'll, I'll end on this. I'm not good for political office. <laughs> I'm really not. I am a good supporter of others. I am a good support position for all sorts of things. And I like to support good people. I support them with my vote. I support them with encouragement. Try to do things I can do to help people. But that's where I'm at. 
I'm just not athletic, so please don't call me an athletic supporter. That's just peachy right there. And Anybody with the nickname Jock knows exactly what I'm talking about. And Stephanie pointed out, by the way, I got signatures by knocking on doors. The key is, is it fair for X to stand? There you go. That's a good point over there. Uh, Joseph, what, uh, what, do you, what do you got that you want to finish off with over here? Oh, yeah, once again, well, you don't want the show to go on another hour. So, yeah, well, don't give up. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Bridget, again, reminding you that we have an agreement, you and I, not to be yelling. Where do you want to close off with mm, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna do my fuck you now to uh, Susan Collins take your fake concern and shove it up your ass sideways I'm on board on that one and just like with the meme about uh, a genie you know what that one's on me you got a freebie after that if you want it That's really all you want to drop that? I'm just... Uh, I, I, I don't even know what to say anymore. I really don't know. That's fair. There's been just so much scum come out of SCOTUS in the last week that I'm reeling. You know, there's there's even one ruling that most people are not even aware of, but I am just because of you know the industry that I'm in that pisses me off even worse. I mean, we live in an oligarchy. We know this. Citizens United did us no favors. That needs to go. But insurance companies are at it again. There was a ruling this week where um, people who need dialysis are getting fucked. And especially with COVID, you know, causing damage to people's organs and causing them to have to, you know, go on dialysis and things like that, it's going to fuck them too. Because basically they're saying now that uh, insurance companies can curtail benefits for people who or in renal failure and need dialysis. They don't have to uh, pay as much. So there you go. And I can tell you dialysis is not cheap. And if people are going to have to pay for that out of their pockets to try to stay alive, you know, the, what's, you know, what's 30 or $40,000 a month in, you know, more medical bills? I had a family member on dialysis. Yeah. Well, they, uh, SCOTUS, SCOTUS ruled this week that insurance companies can cut benefits for dialysis, so there you go. He, he would have uh, essentially died sooner. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, here's your death panels. They're here. Yeah, and and they thought the Democrats were going to do it. Mm -hmm. No. No, it wasn't them. It was never them. Stephanie also uh, dropped one more over in here. There is another way to sort out SCOTUS in a land full of guns but it would be immoral to suggest it. I'm going to open... Uh, I'm going to open my closing uh, with that. Is it immoral what is being implied? As with all things, it depends. There are a number of ways to look at it. The straight biological sense yeah maybe the legal sense yeah maybe see that's the problem with some of these legal takes especially on gun ownership here in the United States because it's always almost always I should say 
touted as the, well, what am I supposed to do when the government gets too big for itself and oversteps its bounds? What happens when there are people who organize, who believe that's exactly what's happened, and go after the government? And reminding you, the government is just people. The double-edged sword of this whole damn thing is, isn't that what we saw a year ago, January 6th? Who's to say who's in the right and who's in the wrong? It all depends, as we've heard on many an occasion before, on the victors and who writes the history books. But, believe it or not, I want to make reference to a line from religion. I know. I know. But I did find out about it through religious channels. I found out about it because it was a piece of religious text that was read that makes a difference. I saw a trailer for the upcoming or already in broadcast or whatever it is streaming for the Marvel show, Ms. Marvel. The line came from Kamala's father, who said, uh, let's see if I can quote the piece over here. Um, Whoever saves one life saves the entire world. I may be getting it incorrect, and I, I apologize. Apparently, the line has been used many a time before. Schindler's List. Whoever saves one life saves the world entire. And like with so many other religious texts and lines, there are always lovely sentiments in and amongst all these pieces of shit. This is a line that is worth remembering. We can't save the entire world by looking at the entire world as something to be saved. We save one person. Somehow, some way, some little piece. That person is what we can do. And for that one person, it is their entire world, their entire life. And sometimes it's just their feelings. Maybe it's just their proverbial soul, their fight, their desire to stay healthy, well. We can't worry that we can't save the entirety of the world. We can't save the entire populace of 330 plus million people in our country. Never mind the 8 billion people across the entirety of the face of this planet. And a little bit above it. But we can save one. And sometimes that one is a newborn. Sometimes it's a child. We can save just one. Do right for them. And hope that they will continue to share that further. We know this has been a really, really, really shit week for a lot of people. We are going to do our damnedest as we always have and every time something like this has come up I've said the same damn thing and maybe in different words you are not alone we will keep being here for you as long as we can if you need someone to call out to if you need someone to talk to please be in touch with us we have plenty of opportunities for you to get in touch with us 
instant messaging in various different forms, Twitter, direct messages, uh, Discord, at the channel to let us know, hey, I need somebody to talk to. We will do our damnedest to be there for you. You will not be alone, and we will do our best that we can to help you. So with that reminder out of the way, we need to call it a night. Thank you for being with us. If you have found something worthwhile in all of our perspectives, good, because that's what we're hoping for. So please take care of yourselves. Stephanie, I know that you've been alone all night. Sorry about that, but just thank you. Just thank you very kindly. And you take care of yourself, huh? Just know that we really care about you. Tech, I know it's a short night for you at this point, but glad you're home safe. And uh, you take care uh, of yourself, huh? Absolutely. Oh, in response to Stephanie Wilson, uh, when I mentioned Brewster's Millions, you were saying that um, uh, when you were talking about getting signatures by knocking on door for office and all that, explain that you're not asking for their vote. Brewster's Millions is a comedy, and one of the guys runs for office, and he, his, his main thing is telling people not to vote for him you gotta watch the movie it's an old, old older movie but it's funny especially if you like richard Pryor. yeah it was uh it, it was a great it, it, it was a great movie i forget i gotta get my son to watch that yeah early early 80s yeah. if i remember correctly it yeah. was it was it was great but thank you man yep joseph I'm glad you were able to make it, too. You take care of yourself, man. Thanks. Yeah, you too, sir. You got any uh, special projects uh, coming up that you want to tell us about? Because, I mean, I haven't checked in with you about that recently. Um. Well, I'm now um, about to head home from uh, planning a next trip uh, to Burgundy. So. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, that's going to be happening the 21st. And it seems everything's going okay, so... Yeah, it's a go. So... Excellent. He's spending a couple weeks... Doing some castling. Right. And aside from that, it's... Uh, yeah, well, work as usual. But, hey, I'm not complaining. I don't blame you a bit. I hope it works out well. Thanks, man. You, you have a good one. Okay, thank you, man. Bridget, yeah, it's been a hell of a week. Thank you for being with me, and um, thank you for being uh, awake and conscious tonight. I, I, I really do appreciate it. You take care of yourself, huh? Yeah, I'm trying to. I know. I know. But... So I'm still I'm still floored at John Cornyn. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm floored at <laughs> these people saying the quiet part out loud. Yeah. And if any and if Stephanie has no idea what I'm talking about, there was a ruling, you know, Plessy versus Ferguson and Brown versus Board of Education that made it, you know, legal for black people to go to school with white people. And so we have a sitting Congress critter in Texas who wants that repealed now because he wants to bring segregation back. Yeah, well, there are a bunch of them down there in Texas who are also complaining and saying that they want to secede from the Union. But, you know, I don't think this is a good idea. Cool. If we could keep Austin, shit, get rid of the rest of the state. Sure. Yeah, small problem with that, you know, because, I mean, we've got all these, you know, fighter planes and guns and mortars and bombs and I don't think that if, would look really good you know they seceded then they would not get to keep the uh, military installations or NASA or any of that no oh, I know I know it's kind of the point so yeah let them secede and let them just check on their own shit financially they would not survive without the rest of the United States yeah that'd be funny Considering but we get to keep Austin, though, because Austin is a cool city. Yeah, well, they've got bats. So, I mean, that's... that's. They've got bats, and that's where all the liberals in the state live, pretty much. Which it's means... It's a very liberal enclave. Which means liberals live where there are bats. Sure, yeah. Which is kind of cool. I know. Causation. The 
I know. But but in any case, good luck this week. And um, y you know for well where to find me. It's um, for all of you in the audience. Thank you for being with us. I can't say that enough. I have literally no idea how many of you are out there. I know that there is one person, I know who you are, who is always commenting after the fact over on YouTube. Thank you. I have no idea how many of you are listening through podcast downloads. It's thank you. We will be here. We will do our damnedest. We will try to be a voice to help you out. And sometime during the summer, I'm going to see about trying to get a channel so that we can all have an opportunity to be on together some night. Because an opportunity to get everybody that wants to be on, on. I think one night at least for that would probably be a good idea. But in the meantime, just thank you. If you want to be in touch with us otherwise, all contact information is over at holycrapthevlogcast.com. Phone number, if you want to leave a voicemail, is 859-HCTV-554. That's country code 1. 859-4288-554. And we will be here for you. So, till the next time we're together, as always. I wish you the peace I no longer have. I wish you the strength that I've learned. I wish you well. My lady, 17 years on, I am still in love with you. Ah. Matane Fujin, I love you. I miss you. Dream of us. And until next week when we're together again, good night. <laughs>